Here's another junk store find. Uh, this is really old school. It's a uh, uh, oscillator. <laughs> so now they're just little tiny one 24 pin dips, but at least this one is big and fancy. Uh, Murata, big, big name on it. Uh, it's not that old though, it's 2002. So 85, oh, maybe it's 1985. No, I take it back. Maybe it's 1985. That would make more sense. That would make more sense. Yes, 1985. Goodness. All right, so it's real old school. Good. <laughs> Murata Erie, North America Incorporated, Car Carlisle Operations, Pennsylvania, made in America. All right, so what does it say? It says it's a model AD 1731 1.1. Frequency of 177.588 megahertz. So 177, who wants that? Hmm. I don't know. And for a lot of these uh, RF things, they use negative voltages instead of positive voltages. So this takes a, a negative 5.2 volts. And uh, on the back it says, yeah, there's apply that there and ground there, ground there, and here's your output. So kind of the precursor to the little uh, little oscillator cans. Now this one has a screw on it. You can unscrew that. You can reach a screwdriver in there and you tweak the tweak the uh, frequency accurately. So it's all in this nice uh, welded can here, soldered can. Um, it looks pretty shiny for 1985. So yeah, good plating. So what I did was I bought two of them, one to open up and one to keep. I don't remember what I paid for them. It wasn't, wasn't much. Uh, so, what's inside? Well, this is inside. Uh, crystal. And three transistors. So this is the oscillator over here. And then there's a amplifier, amplifier, and then output. So that's all there is to it, but lots of adjustments. So this is the little adjustment over here that tweaks the frequency. And there's kind of a tune here for the oscillator to be happy. And then you can peak, peak the two amplifiers here for maximum output. And I added a little uh, S SMA connector on it so we can hook it up to the uh, easily hook it up easily to the uh, oscilloscopes and uh, spectrum analyzer. So I don't have a oscilloscope quite this fast, I don't think. So we can try though. Uh, we can try to see what the Raggle does with this if you can see it or not. Um, but let's go ahead and hook it up to the uh, spectrum analyzer now. I know a lot of people are kind of freaked out about the spectrum analyzer and oh you need to know the power level before you hook up your spectrum, spectrum analyzer because you don't want to blow it up and they're going to run out they're going to buy they're going to spend a bunch of money on power meters and everything. No, 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 no. Calm down. <laughs> Everybody calm down. <laughs> so I do not know the output power of this. So I'm not just gonna hook it up to my spectrum analyzer. Um, I, need, I need to be safe, right? So I can do a couple things. The first thing I can do is, well, how much power could this thing output? Well, what do I know? I know it's five volts and I'm gonna run it into 50 ohms. And I can just do a really, really quick calculation of V squared over R, right? Just, okay, so it's 25 divided by 50, it's half, it's half a watt. So. I mean, that'd be like the absolute maximum this thing could output would be a half a watt, right? It's just, it's just not going to get there. Um, so there's no voltage multiplications or anything on this. I mean, it is, it is probably, you know, <laughs> no more than half a watt. I will stake my rep reputation on that. Um, so anyway, so let's, um, let's hook it up. And like I said, eh, wrong, stop. Wait a minute, half a watt? Oh, anytime you use the word watt, <laughs> you probably don't want to hook it up to your spectrum analyzer. If you're talking like negative 10 dBm, yeah, you can hook it up. But if you're talking watts, no, don't hook it up. So, so like I said, don't freak out. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick, a quick sanity check. Okay, half a watt. Ooh, that's bad, right? And let's say we don't even know that. We don't even know, but we can kind of guess. Is it going to be six watts? No, no, not this thing, you know. You can kind of make, just kind of make a guess. All right. Then the next thing you do is go get yourself an attenuator. You need at least one attenuator, okay? So this is a 30 dB attenuator. So it's a big attenuator in dBs, and it's good for about two watts, okay? So this, this attenuator will be fine for this application. So I'm going to put in my attenuator, my 30 dB, 
and I'm going to hook it up to the spectrum analyst. Now, am I going to leave it on to make measurements? No, I'm going to use the power. I'm going to use the spectrum analyzer as my power meter. I'm going to put it in a 30 dB pad and I'm going to measure the power level. Now, it might be way down, it might be noisy, it might be a terrible looking signal. But I don't care. What I want to figure out is, well, how many watts is it? And if it's measuring, you know, anything above zero dBm, I, you know, I probably want to leave some type of attenuator on, but I might be able to measure it. If it's measuring, say, minus 40 after we put this on, right, um, you know, we can say, oh, well, that minus 40, but with a 30 dB pad in here, that's minus 10. So it's only minus 10. Oh, I can hook that up to my spectrum analyzer and then I can get rid of this. But for now, we're going to leave it on and then we're going to turn it on. And we're going to be perfectly safe because we have this 30, 30 dB of attenuation here. Now this is negative, so we're going to put the red lead on ground. And we're going to put the black lead on minus 5. All right, so there we go. We should be oscillating. And it looks like we have one signal. And where is that signal? Uh, peak search, peak to the right. It is at uh, 180 megahertz. Okay, so close enough. We don't have very good resolution with this. We're, we're sweeping the entire up to 1.8 gigahertz, but we know we can kind of zoom in. So let's do frequency. Let's look between 100 megahertz and 400 megahertz. Okay, so there it is. So now we can do a peak search and it's at uh, one, I can't read where I am, marker. It's at 175 megahertz, okay? So we can do a, uh, we can zoom in on that. I like my zoom function on this thing. It automatically finds it, puts it in the middle. And it's at 176.188. Okay, so that's what this one is. We can change our amplitude here and we can measure it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna sit, we're gonna have our marker. Uh, we're gonna measure the peak. So we're gonna go to marker. So the, the marker is right at the peak. Do a peak search. Marker's right at the peak at minus 42 dBm. Now we have a 30 dB pad in there. So we know we're at minus 12, okay? So minus 12 is perfectly, uh, perfectly safe. All right, so we have successfully figured out what we can do with our spectrum analyzer without having to buy a power meter. It says that we're safe to get rid of this 30 dB pad. I mean, if you're really unsure, you know, use more, more dB or more wattage of your, of your attenuator, right? Just sneak up on it, sneak up on it. All right, so we're gonna hook it up directly. And we'll go take a look and we're kind of off screen now because it got big. So let's hit our uh, amplitude. We can dial it down and peak search. We're at minus five. Okay, minus 5.6 dBm. Perfectly fine for the spectrum analyzer. Uh, put it in the center here, minus five. All right. Um, let's see if this thing has any harmonics. So uh, frequency again, we're going to go from say 100 to 400, that should show us uh, some harmonics. And there might be a little spike down there, but it's very, very small, all right? Okay, so I wanna show you a couple things here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to adjust is, uh, we could adjust the frequency, but that's kind of boring. People have seen that before. We're going to adjust this one and see what it does. Okay. I'm not quite sure. I think I know what it does, but I'm not quite sure. Let's take a look at that, at that one. It is on the output of the transistor that is the oscillator. Okay. So it has something to do with the oscillation. And I'm going to put a screwdriver on it. I'm going to turn it a bit and look at that. Our harmonic just went up. Okay. And so... Uh, we can zoom out even farther, do a frequency, stop frequency of, let's say, uh, one gigahertz. Let's see if there's any other harmonics here. I'm going to adjust it. Uh, oh, look at that. Wham! Okay, so uh, so something really happened in there. We're getting a, kind of some positive feedback in that, in that oscillator, and we're getting a whole bunch of harmonics. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to make a comb, a comb generator or something, but that's what that thing does. It it uh, starts taking out those harmonics. So what, did, what is happening here? We're clipping. We're turning our sine wave into a square wave. We're clipping. 
and by adjusting that we're turning it into a nice sine wave. Now we still have a couple harmonics here and we're going to keep adjusting it and we still have a harmonic left. I'm still adjusting it, still adjusting it. Oh. And then we stop oscillating. So the tr there's a trick between making a nice big oscillation and getting rid of the harmonic. And so right about, right about there, we've gotten rid of the harmonics and we still have a nice big signal, okay? So that looks pretty good. So let's zoom back in on it. Uh, let's see here, peak search, peak to the center, uh, span, let's go in here. Peak search. All right. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust uh, these two guys. Now, these two guys are on little amplifier. Come on, focus. Really? Really? Focus there. Um, so we adjusted this one for harmonics. We got rid of the harmonics. Now we're going to adjust these. Two. These are almost like the IF coils in a radio. We're going to peak them, okay? We're going to try to peak these. All right, so we're going to adjust that first one and oh, went down and went too far. And so you kind of adjust this for a peak right about there. And then I'm going to adjust the next one, which is the output stage, adjust it for a peak. And there we go. We have a nice peak. Um, so I'm sure, you know, some buddy back in 1985. <laughs> just did what I did, tweaked all these, and then soldered the lid shut, the lid shut, <laughs> shut the lid shut, anyway, um, soldered the, uh, the lid shut and made it into a nice product. But uh, that's why they were in there. This one to get rid of the harmonics and these two to peak up for maximum output level. And uh, this one for volt, for uh, uh, frequency, but, but the, the user has access to that one, right? So... There you go. Okay, I mentioned uh, maybe my Rigel can see 177 megahertz. <laughs> so let's go ahead and run it into a, into the scope. Uh, I did a trick here that you that you might like to know about. Um, the output probably wants to see 50 ohms, and so instead of going and trying to reach for a 50 ohm load, I went ahead and I used my 30 dB pad. You say, well, that's no good because it's not terminated. But if you think about it, it's 30 dB in this direction and 30 dB in this direction. So any return is going to be 60 dB down. And if you had an antenna match that was 60 dB, it's a really, really good 50 ohm load. So you can use a large uh, dB attenuator as a, as, a, as a load. And this one's good for two watts, so it makes a nice little load. And certainly, you know, good enough for doing quick, quick little measurements like this. So, yeah, use it as a load. So I've got a uh, scope probe. I'm going to hook that up. Look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. <laughs> now, oh, oh, I'm caught on my tripod. Sorry. Whoa. Um, so this is as fast as the Rigel goes. I don't go no faster. And... Uh, but I did turn on frequency in it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where's frequency? Frequency button. And yeah, it's down there. You can't probably can't see it, but it says you know 175 megahertz. Yeah, it's it's uh, doing its thing. I'm really surprised how fast this scope is. Um, yeah. And we can kind of see, you know, it kind of looks like a nice a nice sine wave. So let's uh let's adjust that. Remember the, the second, I hear a lot of shit. Um, you remember this potentiometer that we adjusted here for uh, harmonics? Well, that's because it wasn't a, a sine wave. It was probably turning into a square wave. And then remember it kind of broke and, and we got a comb, probably was, was a whole bunch of harmonics. Let me adjust it here uh, with the scope in the picture. Oh, there we go. It kind of goes weird in that direction and in this direction. Oh man, oh, there we go. See, all kinds of weird, all kinds of weird things are happening. So it's probably right, you know, kind of where you're peeking it right here is probably where it's happy. Probably right, a, right about there, I'm assuming. Um, anyway, the best way to, to adjust that would be with the spectrum analyzer. But we can see that, you know, the oscilloscope is useful at 177 megahertz. Uh, amazing. <laughs>